Hello everyone, it's History of Jude. Today I will be presenting the Battle of King's Mountain. This was a decisive engagement which took place on the 7th of October 1780 in the American Revolutionary War. It was fought between various patriot militias and over, and over mountain men commanded by various patriot leaders such as William Campbell, James Johnston, and John Sevier. On the other side were various loyalist militias recruited from the southern colonies commanded by Patrick Ferguson and Abraham de Paster. In order to fully understand this battle, we must go back a few months. Major pra Patrick Ferguson was appointed Inspector of Loyalist Militia on May 22, 1780. His task was to march into the Carolina backcountry and raise Loyalist units in order to protect Cornwallis' flank. Earlier in the war, the Carolina backcountry was actually uh, one of the main spots of uh, Loyalist activity, and at, especially very early in the war, Loyalist uh, recruitment actually was larger than that of the Patriots. So this was a very known place and uh, one that they wanted to go search and recruit for Loyalists in. On the morning of the 18th of August, 1780, 200 Patriots prepared to raid a Loyalist camp at M Musgrove's Mill, South Carolina. On the 19th of August, one day later, the Patriots anticipated that there would be an equal number of Loyalists to their numbers, which was 200 approximately. But a local farmer had told them that they had been reinforced by 300 men on their way to join Patrick Ferguson, Major Patrick Ferguson of the 71st Foot. The Patriot attack had only lasted an hour for over 140 Loyalist casualties and over around 20 Patriot casualties, because this was a an ambush of one of the main Loyalist camps in South Carolina. Major Ferguson immediately started pursuing the Patriot force that had attacked Musgrove's mill, um, and the, but the Patriot force managed to escape from the Loyalists. The Patriot force, commanded by Isaac Shelby, retreated across the Appalachian Mountains, and on and the 5th, 25th of December, 1780, 600 over-mountain men had grouped up with 400 Virginia militiamen on the other side of the mountains. However, on the 2nd of September, Ferguson and his recently recruited militia marched west towards the Appalachian Mountains in order to destroy the Patriot army being assembled there. The leaders of the Patriot forces soon realized that they would have to strike first, and they all agreed that they would march their militias against Major Ferguson's loyalist troops. The thing was, the Patriots had lower numbers so far than the Loyalist force, so they would need more men. Many Patriot militias and, and over-mountain men on September the 25th met at a rendezvous at Sycamore Shoals in North Carolina. The Patriot militias started advancing towards Ferguson, and two deserters of the Patriot force informed Major Ferguson of this. Basically what you have now an equal number of Patriots to the Loyalists, and they're now, instead of Major Ferguson pursuing them, the Patriots are pursuing Major Ferguson. Ferguson and his men, after retreating east, decided to make camp atop of King's Mountain. It act in fact, it's actually at the very northern edge of South Carolina, where his camp was. This was before he was supposed to march further east to link up with Cornwallis. Needing to hurry to catch up to Ferguson, 900 Patriot militiamen rode on horseback towards King's Mountain, hoping to intercept Ferguson's forces. Because keep in mind, this Loyalist militia was one-third of Cornwallis' army, and if they could destroy this, this would be a huge blow to the British effort in the south. The battle started up at around 3 p.m. on the 7th of October, 1780. When some Patriots assaulted the western ridge of the mountain, the Patriots caught Ferguson and his Loyalists completely off guard, and the Loyalists 
scrambled to get into lines. Unfortunately for Ferguson, the hill had not been fortified, so the only real cover he had was the trees. So in the battle, we have about approximately 1,100 loyalists. Approximately 100 of those loyalists are provincial regulars, uh, irregulars, my, excuse me. These provincial irregulars are essentially loyalists who, have a, who, who are enlisted in the British Army. The rest are militiamen that are separate. And uh, the Patriots, around 900, it's a mix of uh, mostly Virginian militia, a bit of Georgian militia, and over-mountain men, which are uh, men who lived on the other side of the uh, Appalachian Mountains. Uh, these men are very strong and skilled at combat and hunting, and they're armed with mostly rifles. Soon Ferguson found himself surrounded as screaming patriots charged up the hill. The patriots jumped into cover and fired their accurate rifles behind rocks and trees. Ferguson then ordered a bayonet charge. Patriots were lacking bayonets, so they proceeded to retreat into the woods and then regrouped where they could resume firing. So essentially, there was no real commander that was in charge of all the Patriot forces at the time. Each militia was had its own commander, and they, they would act independently, but with the common goal of surrounding Ferguson's men and destroying them. The following commanders of the Patriot forces are... Shelby, Williams, Lacey, Cleveland, Hambright, Winston, McDowell, Saver, and Campbell. And while the, the British Loyalist forces are commanded by one commander, Ferguson. The fighting was brutal for the Loyalists, who fired their ineffective volleys against Patriots concealed in cover. However, when the Loyalists charged down the hill in an attempt to disperse the Patriots, it proved effective. Because of the Patriot Riflemen and Frontiersmen lacking any melee capability, because they simply just do not have bayonets. During one of the charges, Colonel Williams was killed, which was one of the Patriot commanders, and Colonel McDowell wounded. So these, this was the only effective uh, combat that the, the Loyalists actually participated in throughout the fighting. By 4 p.m., Loyalist casualties were mounting quickly, and Major Ferguson decided he would ride his horse across, waving his sword, ordering to charge. But he was shot multiple times and was killed as he fell off his horse. As Loyalists were pushed back nearer and nearer towards their camp, a mass surrender began, with Loyalists surrendering and laying down their arms. The battle had been going on for 65 minutes at this point. Many patriots showed no mercy and brutally executed the Loyalists' forces in their encampment. Finally, the battle had ended. It resulted in over 290 Loyalists being killed and 163 wounded and 668 captured. On the patriot side, 28 were killed and only 62 were wounded. This was an absolutely decisive defeat for the Loyalists and British efforts in the South, because this Loyalist force was about one-third of Cornwallis's army. And this was a huge loss. And then along with the, the Battle of Cowpins, which, uh, which uh, happened just a not, not too long after this event, uh, this battle would be remembered in history as the turning point of the war in the Southern colonies which raised the crumbling patriot morale and would ultimately lead to the surrender at Yorktown in just over a year from this event. Thank you so very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like or subscribing. See you next time.